Hi folks, my name is Brent Dano. I'm a postdoctoral researcher specializing in ethical AI on the European Union Siena project. I'm also associated with 20 University in the Netherlands through whom I'm working on the Siena project and I teach issues of philosophy related to digital technology at Maynooth University in Ireland where I am based. The Siena project is a fairly large project that's been going for a number of years now, we'll be finishing in March, designed to develop ethics, protocols, professional codes of conduct, policy recommendations, a whole bunch of stuff to try to put some ethical parameters or breaks, if you like, around research into human genomics, human enhancement technology, artificial intelligence and robotics. My primary role in the project has been to develop ethical guidelines for the funding of artificial intelligence research within Europe. So what I'd like to do is just start by setting the context. The problem with artificial intelligence, the reason why we have ethical concerns about it, is it keeps messing up after it's been deployed. I'm sure all of you can think of situations where we know the artificial intelligence system has created some form of ethical dilemma, whether it's been racial bias or uh, false positives, all sorts of things. But anyway, the general point is that we need to impose, or we believe we need to impose, ethical limits on artificial intelligence in order to reduce the harms that it has been seen to cause in society. And obviously, the more AI we get, and it will permeate society in the near future, the more urgent the need to put ethical limitations on it are. And this is not something that's unique to the European Union. There are initial moves towards developing AI standards regarding ethics all over the world. IEEE is doing this. We have, for example, the P7000 working group, which is developing standards for ethical AI. I have observer status on that, so I'm watching that develop. We have standards being developed by ISO, IETF. We have meetings between Siena and UNESCO. They're working on similar things. And there's any number of government initiatives all around the world. Plus, we're also seeing industry in initiatives such as XAI, Explainable AI, certification programs. We've seen Google, Microsoft, IBM, all of these companies are working on the issue of ethical AI. Now, we think that the reason why AI keeps causing problems after it's deployed is mainly because nobody thought about the consequences when they were designing the system, or in some cases, perhaps they simply didn't care. I have heard engineers say ethics is what happens after I've finished building the system. It's nothing to do with me. That attitude is fading, but it's still fairly prevalent throughout the industry. I'm sure you'll agree. Our solution is to force the development process to consider ethical issues during the design and construction of the system. So, hence we call this ethics by design. Ethics by design is part of the values by design approach that was started with privacy by design. It's not a methodology, it's an approach. It's a way of thinking about things. And in our case, we've taken that thinking down to identifying specific concrete tasks that must be performed during the design and development of an AI system. So it's designed so that we can do this within any methodology that a system is using to be developed by. So what we're doing is we are identifying key values. Values lead to norms. In the case of ethics by design, we call these norms ethical requisites. They're things an AI system must or must not do in order to be ethical. We then turn those into concrete design requirements. Some of them are related to the behavior of the system. A lot of them are related to the way in which it is designed, particular development approaches, forms of documentation, specific tasks that have to be undertaken at different points in the, in the design process. And then you, we use a generic design model to lay out when these tasks have to occur, which can then be used to map 
the generic model to the specific methodology that's being used. Now, obviously, I can't explain all of our values, but they're basically they're categories that incorporate a number of well-established human values. We've drawn these from the UN Charter on Human Rights, basic EU principles, constitutions from the round of the world and so on. For the most part, they're pretty uncontroversial. So, for example, the value category of human agency incorporates the values of human autonomy, human dignity and human freedom. What we then do is translate these values into ethical requisites. So ethical requisites instantiate the values, embody the values within an AI system. So for example, with human agency, a couple of the requisites are that people should know when they're interacting with an AI. AI shouldn't fool them into thinking it's a human. AI systems should not try to deceive people. The value category of fairness requires that AI systems should be designed to avoid bias in data, in the algorithm design, and in how they act. And they should not cause people to be discriminated against. Accountability and oversight are very important requisites. So what this requires is that an AI system can be accountable to humans for its actions. So this requires, for example, that the ethical characteristics of the system are tested before it's deployed. And if a human is affected by a decision made by an AI, they should be able to get an explanation for the logic behind that decision and the governance value would then dictate that if necessary they should be able to appeal it and have it overridden and if necessary have the algorithms or some other aspect leading to that decision changed inside the system. This sort of thing is going to become more important. We're starting to see the requirements for AI systems to be audited for ethical fairness and so explainability and accountability are going to become legal requirements. So here we have the generic development model. You can see the phases there. And you can see how for each of the phases, we've got a specific task that we're identifying that has to be met in order for the system to be considered ethical. So for example, if we're designing the objectives of a system and the objective of the system is to prevent people from voting, then under our system, that would be a direct no-no. You simply wouldn't be allowed to build such a system. When it comes to designing the requirements of the system, you need to think about, for example, how you're going to document the acquisition of the data, how it's stored, and you'll need to be able to say how you ensured bias wasn't there. What concrete tasks during the data collection and preparation phase you took to check for and eliminate bias before the data was passed into the learning mechanisms. All the way through the development process, there are similar requirements. So, for example, you need to document how you continued to check for bias, how learning models were accounted for, and so on. And there are a, a large number of tools, particularly open source tools, starting to emerge from industry specifically for these tasks, such as model cards or the whole XAI system and so on. And then finally, we need to lay down a series of tests to be done specifically on the ethical characteristics of the system at the end in the same way as we test for reliability and security to ensure that the system is safe for deployment. The status of the ethics by design system is that the document I've produced is in the process of being translated. It will be the official requirements for applications for AI funding. The European Union is going to be spending 1.5 billion each year on AI research funding and all projects will have to show how they are going to implement ethics by design within their project in order to get approval. These rules, these guidelines are also moving into the early stages of licensing and badging schemes for AI products. Denmark has already started this, but I fully expect that over the next few years, you simply won't be able to release an AI product into the world until it's been checked for ethical compliance and there'll be some sort of badging or licensing scheme to go with it.